Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well and having a wonderful day. In this tutorial, I'm going to be taking you guys on a trip of becoming a render technician in Blender. Um, so not to sound over the top, basically what I'm trying to achieve in this tutorial is to kind of give you tools and tricks that will help you speed up your render time. And I can assure you that by the end of this tutorial, we'll be living with a lot of knowledge that will really help improve um, your rendering skills and make you get better and faster render. So let's get up. Uh, let's get started with getting like a file that we we'll work with. So I'm going to go to Blender.org to download a test scene that we're working with. I already have it downloaded, but I'm just going to show you guys how to download it or get the file. So once you get to Blender.org, you want to go to support and in support, you will find the demo files and you just want to choose from one of it. So you don't have to create just from the beginning. Um, from scratch and the one we'll be using for this particular tutorial is the classroom scene okay so like i said i already have mine downloaded so let's open it up and get started so this is a very nice and well optimized scene and right off the back you can get good render times uh, of course this was created to bench ben test bench benchmark test render time so um, like you see, we have like proxy geometry, which is one thing you should use in your scene, especially when you're kind of populating a lot of assets. Um, so to get started, I want us to kind of have a real-time test and real-time debugging and kind of getting faster render in this process. So I'm going to go ahead and render this as it is. Um, the only one thing I'm going to change is the device. So I'm going to switch this from CPU to GPU because I have GPU and we don't have to waste a lot of time if we don't have to so i'm going to switch it to gpu compute uh, so if you want to know my gpu is geforce gtx 1650 it's not very beefy but it does the trick i'm using my laptop currently uh, i'm thinking i'm actually thinking of kind of upgrading to all the new uh, maybe 3070 that's that's my one wish which i want to grant for myself soon um, but this is what I have so far and this is what we're using So let's go ahead and render this out and see the render time and kind of use it to compare and contrast All the settings we'll be doing as we go along. So let's get started. We're going to go to render and attack So the rendering is done and we can check what we have So from looking at it, I don't know how the YouTube compression we do with this well, you can see, see we have a lot of noise going here. And for the render time, we have about 9, nine minutes, 4 seconds. Um, so that's, it's not very outrageous and it's pretty decent. Um, but the problem is we still have noise. So definitely, if we're going to work with this scene as it is, we'll definitely have to increase the sample, which is kind of not what we are trying to do. We're trying to get lower render time with clearer image. So let's jump down to the steps that you uh, think you should bear in mind to get faster render. So the first is the tiling. So if you're using GPU or CPU, this will vary. So if we go down to performance, we can see here we have tiles. So we have the X tiles and the Y tiles. So if you're working with CPU, it's generally advised to use lower tile size. So in this case, the 32 by 32 work great for CPU rendering. Um, that's because CPU is quite slower and to be more accurate, it works small, small, in little chunks. While GPU, since it's beefier, works best if it's larger tiles. So for this to uh, for my GPU to work in its best form, I have to increase this to like 2, 5, 6. So I've tested this, I've tested higher values and tested lower values. I found this was a sweet spot for my GPU. So you want to test out yours if you're using GPU or CPU to find out the best sweet spot um, for your own system or your own device. Okay, so that's the first one, um, tweaking your tiles. Um, the next one is adaptive sampling. So if you're not familiar with adaptive sampling, the best way I can explain it is using subdivision, the subdivision modifier. So if we have the simple plane right here, and if we look at it, it's quite simple. Um, you have just four points to play with. So to get more details or to be able to add more details onto this geometry, you need to subdivide this couple of times. So that's basically what sampling does to rendering during rendering. Um, so to get more, to clean out the noise from your 
ray traced um, render rendering um, you use the sample style um, you use the sampling to kind of iterate that to kind of get a more cleaner renderer I know the more technical render artists will be like stoning him to death but it's okay this is the best way I can explain it um, it's more advanced than that but this is the best way you can look at it sampling is just basically iterations that allow you to get cleaner render so the higher the sample the more cleaner your render is so what adaptive sampling is is when you render out, out an image it's kind of like a pixel and uh, it kind of applies the same amount of sample to the entire image pixel um, this is good but in some instance there's some areas that have less noise and don't need much sample so that's what the adaptive sampling does it kind of reduces the amount of sampling um, fire to those areas that don't need that those noise free areas and put more attention or more samples to those areas that need more attention so that's basically it so the settings that usually works um, is or the setting you can go with is for the noise threshold you want to set it to zero and for the minimum sample which is the minimum sample that those areas that don't need more sampling we have is um, you can set it to custom size or custom sample in case yours is quite is still noisy so what has worked for me is using 25 especially when i'm using using it in conjunction with um, denoising um, which is going to take us to the next one um, the third stuff you should bear in mind denoising so denoising is relatively a new technology that has been used by pixar and most recently blender has implemented it into cycles and this is quite a, a lifesaver that kind of helps you to kind of speed up your render this allows you to use low sample size which i've explained what it is um but still get higher or get cleaner render and let's go ahead and show um kind of test the different denoiser we have in blender so we have three main de denoiser which is the n lm denoiser we have the open image denoiser and we have the optics denoiser so um i usually discount the nl L nlm denoiser I, I forgot what that stands for uh, but we'll just talk about the optics and the open image denoiser which I found to be the most reliable so I'm going to add a simple I'm just going to create a simple scene put a UV sphere here I'll duplicate it put it here and let's add a camera and let me go here and just load quickly load in an HDRI image okay so this will do and I'll just give this a low color so it's not just or white perfect okay so now we can go ahead and render this um of course we have to turn up the noise let's see how it's going to look with just 60 samples so this thing is not complex and we can still see some noise but it's not too bad um, because blender has cycles has done a lot of, has come a very long way and it has been getting a lot of um, much better so if I go to slot 2, I'm going to um, enable the denoiser and you can enable it here. If you drop this down, you can see render and viewport. Um, if you want to see the denoising in the viewport, you can enable viewport. Um, but in this case, we are trying to denoise for render. So like I said, we have three main denoiser and we're going to be just testing out. Let's test out the uh, NLM. Uh, let's see why I despise it so much. Okay. I don't really despise it but it's not very useful for me in most cases okay so um it's quite fast because we have low samples and we can see we still have some noise going on here which is kind of beating the point of it so um that's why it's not very useful in most cases so let's switch to um slot three and of course i think maybe i'm not using it well um I think you can probably play with some of its settings here yeah but anyways so the one I use is optics or open image so let's do open image denoiser so we'll let this render and it takes its time so right off the back you can see we are getting less noise um, which is what we want we can even compare it with the NL the NLM denoise and uh, we can see this does a better job um, let's now compare it to the optics denoiser so if we render with this
Okay, so we get also we also get a clean image, a clean scene, which is what we want. So, what's the difference between the optics and the open image denoise, which is basically the point of me rendering or showing this? Is basically uh, if we look at the um, open image denoise and look at the render time, this is saying 50 sec 15 seconds, but with the optics, we're getting six seconds. So it's a lot of difference, and one is optics performing better, and uh, also in the open image noise if we check out spots like this um, where there, there are little or no lights you can start seeing it's beginning the edges are kind of blurring out okay and if we check out for the optics um, you can see it handles that much better um, we see it retains the edge um, com better compared to the open image denoiser so you kind of get the point now and so we're going to enable the noise in the scene so let's kind of set everything up so we can go to sampling and reduce the sampling to 150 since we'll be adding the noiser and like i told you we'll be using adaptive sampling so we'll be setting the minimum to 25 like we had in the previous scene and for the denoise we're going to enable render denoiser and switch this optics because it, pr it preserves nice edges and it's also faster um so that's that and so for the next point which we'll be looking at is the light bounces so um my goal with this tutorial is not to kind of give you like a pamphlet of a to do and not to do list my goal in this tutorial is to make you aware of options that you can use and the points that actually drive that across is um, the light bounces um, so with ray tracing how this works is that it once you hit render it fires light into the scene and automatically it's meant to bounce it's kind of um, replicating the reward so if you have to dive um, diffuse surfaces light bounces here bounces here and it, it keeps bouncing until in the in your eyes it kind of reflects that material which is um, showing um, but with cycles you can actually control how much bounces you can get um, with um, when the rays are fired so um, you can go to the light parts here and say max bounces and this is where you can play with that value so this um, when you're trying to tweak the light max bounces you want to it's it depends on your needs and the scene you're working with so if you are going for extra realism is advice you you probably want higher um, max, um you want higher values uh, and i think you can go up to um full global elimination can go up to one to eight um so this is even higher i think um but this is uh probably not what we want in this situation because this thing uh, we can get away with um kind of unrealistic bouncing and it's not going to um as as long as it's not so obvious we can get away with it um so what i'm going to do i'm going to reduce the total from eight to three the fuse to one um, glossy to one bounce because it's not really interacting so much with ob um, reflective objects we have some reflected objects here and there but can get away with one transparency and transmission I'm gonna set this to four and for volume I'm gonna set this to zero um, direct light and indirect light um, you can just leave it as default but usually for my own setting I set this to zero and set this to 15 basically what this does is it kind of clamps down um hot spots um so if like a material if it place particularly very shiny uh, it might result to noise so this helps to clamp it down um also you have the reflective and refractive caustics um in most situations you probably don't need that especially in scenes like this and blender reflective and refractive caustic is not even um, the best in um, in visually um, so usually you may want to account for that by either cheating or um, I don't know it depends on what you need if you're going for higher very realistic you might want to leave this on um, but for this situation we can get away with that and it should not really affect the final outlook of our render so we're going to turn that off and at this point we can actually go ahead and render this and we'll have a very um, we have cut down the time some more um one final thing we can really even do to even push render down even more is using the simplify button so if we enable this you have lots of parameters to play with like reducing the child head particles reducing the subdivision of the geometry 
but what is going to really even going to make more changes is the AO bounces. So by default it's set to zero, which is telling you to turn off and it's going to allow more light to pass in, allow more global illumination. But if you set this to like one, it's going to make the scene a bit darker. So you have to compensate by increasing the light, um, the intensity of the light in the scene or adding more light to kind of make up for those um, darker areas. Um, but in more uh, in more cases, you might not need this if, if it's not necessary. But if you are really trying to cut down your render time, this is definitely going to do that for you. So what I'm going to do now is going to do one render without it and one with uh, with it. So let's see what we have so far. Um, and don't go yet because I have one final tip that's really going to help. Um, so so we have currently nine minutes um, four seconds. Um, let's see how much time we have cut by making all these new changes. So I'm going to go to a new slot and let's hit render image. Okay, so the rendering is done and we have 3 minutes 15 seconds, which is quite great from what we had earlier, which was 9 minutes um, 4 seconds. And this is quite noisy compared to the other one. So if we check this out, you can see we have a cleaner image. And we didn't lose much detail from what we did. Um, though you can notice some changes here. Uh, we have the this place a bit darker compared to the previous image, which is not really obvious. And we can walk around this by just increasing this value, uh, increasing the brightness in the material level, uh, making this slightly an emission shader, kind of mixing it between the diffuse to get a more brighter color. Or increasing the general light to get make it more brighter but overall this is a good upgrade um, as you can see here a more cleaner image so like I said we can even get the render time even more down if we use the simplify so I'm gonna enable the simplify and make sure you enable it here in the render and then set the AO balances to 1 so let's get a new render slot and hit render. This is going to take a very short time. So it's done now and we have 59 seconds, which is really awesome. But of course you will notice like some difference. Um, it's less brighter. Um, so basically you can experiment with make increasing the light source, make increasing the value of the light source to get a more brighter image. But of course, it's a price you're probably willing to pay for the lower, the low render time. So that's it. Like I said, I have one more final tip. Um, this is more kind of like a, a patch and fix stuff. Um, so you want to render, um, usually if you don't have much time or you are trying to save more time, you can render at 50%, which is half of the resolution, and just scale it up after the render is done to even get a more faster render. And you can apply a simple sharpening uh, filter. Of course, you don't want to get go overboard with that. But yeah, that's one thing you can do to even cut it even less than um, 30 seconds to render out the scene. And you can have a nice animation, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to render a very small, um, render this out in a very short time. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope this was very fun for you guys and you picked up something please if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like subscribe um, the like button that's the way you can support this channel so that blend more blender users can see this and if you wish to save uh, more from yours truly don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can always be notified anytime i post a new video so thank you so much for watching um stay to the end so you can enjoy the animation of the camera just panning through this video so enjoy <laughs>